Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trufin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to a special episode of Gwent Edge, because uh, today I want to actually do something a little bit different. Uh, today is not going to be specifically one deck guide. This video is all about trying to show you guys how I create decks. Since we're heading into, well, it's still over a year of content that we're going to get, but after next year, Gwent is going to go into some sort of maintenance infinity mode where you'll be able to do whatever you want. Um, it, I felt, it, it felt to me that it was a good idea to start teaching you guys how I build decks so you can take those tips into your own deck builder and start building your own decks as well. Um, I'm not saying my way is the only way, definitely not. My only goal here is to show you how I do it. I'm not a meta player, I'm definitely a mean deck creator, uh, but most of my decks are actually really functional. So I'm going to show you how the entire process and uh, give you some pointers on what you need to take into account. So let's head into the deck builder. So what you always want to start with, well, what I usually start with is uh, a concept. You want to take one faction and try to go with a specific concept and then work from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new Skellige deck. I want to create a um, self wound deck that uses the new Svalblood card. We'll be making a deck guide about that deck later on. But I want to take you into the process that goes before a deck guide. So it is a self wound deck. So the most obvious option here is Ursine Ritual because it does function as a self damage ability where we damage an allied unit by one five times. And then we spawn a bear abomination, uh, which also factors in really well with this fall blood card. So we're going to go for Earthside Ritual. Also has 16 provisions, so a little bit more uh, provisions that are available to us. So let's start building a deck. So the first thing that I usually want to do, because this is of course very scary. You have like an empty page, white blank space on the left that has nothing. Um, as I said before, I want to make a fall blood cell phone deck. So what card do we start with? Of course, Svalblood. How I usually start by building a deck like this is I want to toss in every card that I really want and then go from there. So what I really want as well is Fukusha. Um, and then some of the other self-wound staples, which are, of course, I'm just checking here. Artist would be really fun. Artist would damage a unit um, that is played by half its power, which means that Svalblood immediately gets very close to that six damage that it needs. Um, so Artist might actually be a good addition. Svalblood Totem also has changed recently, where the order ability is now on a cooldown when you damage an allied unit by two. So I'm definitely going to grab that as well. And two Svalblood Fanatics. Uh, is even more fun. Malocene, also very good card, so I'm gonna grab her as well. I think the final high level card that we really need is Ceres, so there are quite a lot of uh, heavy duty cards here, so we're gonna have to see where we end up with this. Uh, Sigdrifa's Ride to get some cards back is also gonna be very handy, and then the two other staples are of course uh, Nut and Sigvault. That leaves us with, and this is some uh, usually a point where I start checking the remaining provisions. So I need um, 16 more cards and have 74 provisions, which means that I have about uh, 5 provisions per card left, which is definitely fine. So we're going to head down to the bottom now, because we want to start filling out the other side of the provision range. I do like to start with... Um, the classic, so we start with double armor Drakkar. Drakkars just gain, um, well, just boost themselves if they lose the armor. So they basically work very well with self damage here. Um, since we're using artists, I think a doubles Fallblood Fanatic might also be interesting. And then uh, the other ones I want are the double Hermit, because Hermits start damaging the unit to the right. Furthermore, double Priests, we're not looking at... Uh, getting to a specific point with the cards just yet uh, we're just looking for what fits the best so half through singers work very well with heals um, and then the veterans are the last card that i really want to use here there we go that leaves us with 20 uh provisions so this is the point where you start looking at that a little bit because uh, i do want to add some healing so if I go for uh, both Joanna and um, the Heime Flaminica, we have very little provisions left, but just enough to add two more um, four provision cards. 
This is also where devotion starts, uh, starts to become important. We do not have any devotion cards just yet, so we can definitely add some tech cards. And because of that, I'm just going to see if we can work this out with Squirrel uh, to get one Banish and Peller to get one Purify. So that gives us a nice rounded out um, deck, but that's not the end of it, of course. Stratagem wise, I think it's probably best to start using Crystal Skull um, because we do get a little bit of Veil there, which we can protect one unit at the very least from getting locked. Um, and now what we want to do is see if we need any other tech options. So we now have a Banish and a Purify, which is already really good. We have a good balance of cards that can be hit um, and can actually take that hit, such as the Veteran, Fallblood Fanatic, the Armor Tracker, um, Sigvald as well, and then of course Melusine, um all can take some hits, and then of course healing that off and dealing that damage. So both the Priest, Hermit, um, and then Melusine again of course, and Nut are really good cards to start damaging your own cards. So that covers up a couple of the very big pillars during deck building. So our concept is really good, which means that we also have a lot of point generation with the cards that we have. So that's definitely not a problem. Um, you have to start noticing the weaknesses in your deck as well. Provision wise, we're also good. So next up is tech cards. Um, we do have a couple of tech cards. We have Banish and Purify, which is going to be good uh, for certain situations. I think the biggest problem right now with this deck is that we have very little tinning. Um, we're going to have to see if that is even a problem because a lot of the bronze cards are really powerful as well. Um, but if it comes to that, we can start looking into adding some more tinning as well, which we could do, especially since this is um, Scaliger with this card. Um, or of course with some more tutor cards. We have one tutor card here, if you haven't noticed. So we have Artis, who plays a four provision cultist from our deck. Uh, that can work with both the Hermit and the Svalblood Fanatic. So that is really good. We also have a way to bring back Svalblood. Um, because Svalblood is of course going to damage a lot of our units. And we can heal that off with Hemil, Feminica and Joanna. So the concept is good. I think the only thing that we haven't got in this deck... Um, is control options. Uh, we have very little ways of actually dealing damage. In fact, we only have one. Uh, I don't know if you noticed which one, but um, Nut is the only card in this deck that can actually deal direct damage. Of course, Fallblood can deal a lot of damage around the board, but Nut is the only one who can deal direct damage. Um, we're also going to have to see uh, if Fallblood gets locked too often. We have a Purify, but it's only one. Um, if that's going to help out, but we also have two uh, resurrection options in our deck as well. So I think all in all, the concept is really solid and we can get over the fact that we don't have a lot of control uh, rather easily. We have a lot of finishing moves as well. Fallblood is really good on its own, especially with Totem. Malacene is really good, uh, especially with Ceres Felis as well. Um, and then Nut and Sigvald are still as powerful as ever. So I think we have a very solid deck here. And now we of course ended off by naming this. Um, naming is something that you're of course free to uh, do whatever you want with, but I like to add some sort of wordplay in there. So this is going to be there with me. Now we did not include a couple of cards that could also be very useful. Um, I'm thinking for example, we could swap out the Heime Flaminica or even Joanna for, uh, what's his name? I think it's Arnvald. Yeah, there he is. So we can transform a damaged allied unit into a bear abomination, which triggers Svalblood again. Um, it's something we could do, but we have like three healing options. So we're not definitely, we're not really working towards damaged units. We're going to have plenty of bear abominations from both the Svalblood Totem and the Svalblood Fanatic. So I think that is also fine. Just spitballing here so you know what my process is. Another card that we did not include, uh, which could be very nice, is Filt Carl. Uh, so if he gets damaged to below half health, he transforms into a 12 point champion of Svalblood, uh, which can also heal itself. It could be a good card, but I don't really see a way of fitting it in. Um, I would have to shift around a couple of cards that I really don't want to lose. So I'm just going to try and see if this is going to be enough. Because I think the healing is going to be more valuable. Uh, I could get rid of both of them and then get Viltkarlin for 7 and then swap a uh, 5 provision card in as well. Uh, maybe something even with a little bit of damage like the, um, the whale here, Delirium. 
or even the artifact compression. So resetting and locking. But I think for now uh, we're fine. So let's try this out uh, and this will immediately also become probably one of the, uh, the example matches in the deck guide itself. Last but not least, um, cosmetics are very important to me as well. So I changed my avatar, I changed my border to something applicable. The favorite card has also changed this fall blood now. And if we go in, we also change our um, yeah our visuals here. So the board definitely could go with the ship, although it might not fit very well. I mean, it's Christmas. We might as well take the snowy field. Uh, music doesn't really matter too much. Um, not that any of this matters. Uh, Svalblood, however, does have a skin, so we might as well go with um, her, I think? Isn't Svalblood a her? I'm not exactly sure. Um, we could go with the bears here, although I think this one is more, yeah, definitely more suitable. I don't have a bear coin, I think. Uh, so what would be a good coin for this? I don't have the Svalblood coin yet, that would have been ideal. Let's grab the uh, the dragon one instead, the Harbinger of Crisis. And that should, uh, yeah, be okay to uh, get going. So the most important thing you need to realize during testing a deck is um, if your matchup is also suitable for the deck itself. Right now we're facing a mirror, uh, which is interesting in its own right. I think I'm going to keep the squirrel, because I can banish something that uh, gets tossed to the graveyard there. Other than that, the veteran is fine. We get a couple of damagers, we get a couple of healers. I don't need this fall blood fanatic just yet. And we get the purify as well. Okay. I don't get any of my fancy cards just yet. Uh, so I am just gonna use the armor drag car. I don't think I need to. Do I need to veil that? I don't need to veil that. And then we get Saris on crate. Oh, this is gonna be a lippy deck. That is interesting. That's going to be a lippy deck. Okay, then I think we're basically fine. Yeah, this should be fine. So let's put this fall blood priest down. Uh, he's going to be a very big boy eventually, but we can handle that. Uh, with your adapt. So yeah, this is definitely going for some uh, juicy stuff. I'm going to go to your sock veteran next. I could get rid of the Ceres uh, in the graveyard later on. I have no idea where this deck is going, so I'm just going to play out my own set here. Okay, that's going to kill. That was really lucky they got assassination with that. I could do Fall Blood Totem, but that's going to be a bit of overkill, I think. Uh, they are getting ahead quite nicely, though. So I'm going to need the um, the tempo. The Drum and Berserker, that might actually hit one of my units. I can definitely take the hit. Okay. There we go. I am gonna use the Hafru Singer first and heal that fanatic. And then I'm gonna veil her because she's gonna be generating quite a lot of points for us now. There we go. I can also get rid of the armor here. Um, at the end of the turn of the armor tracker has no armor, gain two armor. So it gains the armor back at the end of the turn, so I need to be careful with that. So that's something that you just learn by playing um just the li those little intricacies but we're doing pretty okay with only one gold that we played we're four points ahead with equal cards now okay the ranged corsairs probably gonna yeah infuse the uh oh thank you thank you very much um uh, i'm gonna do uh this and now this one is going to heal as well constantly, so I can just uh, hit the Svalblood Fanatic here and transform it. And that's going to be fine. We're going to get another point on the Priest and gain more Sirens in the process. I could purify this uh, status away. Um, I think it's fine. It's fine. And he's self-damaging the one unit that is getting heals here, so that is also fine. This fanatic is going to transform. I have nothing yet that I need to banish. I think I'm still fine if I pass now. Yeah, I think I'm fine. So this is going to generate more points. We're seven points ahead. We're going to get hit by the Cataclysm again. But we get more Deafening Sirens every time we heal. So if... No, we don't. We're not going to get any heals anymore. Because I know a Lippy deck like this has uh, Korati. 
or Igni, wow. That's fine, at least the card is gone then. Unless, of course, we get Lippy later on, which is probably going to be the case. There were a lot of golds there um, that were played. So I think we're fine still. We got that deck thinned out a little bit. Okay, that's really good. So now we get Saris in hand. Uh, I'm going to get her out of here because I don't want her in hand. The Hermit is going to be the only card that actually self-damages in this spot. So I'm going to keep him and get rid of the Pallig and we get another Svalblood Priest. We get a Banish there. I don't even know what they banished. I think they banished the Priest, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to banish as well. Because I'm going to banish the... Ceres. There we go. And I could get Sigvald on now. And try and start damaging him. Because I get Fukushia and Sigdifas, right? So I don't really lose anything by playing these cards. And then we get Coral. Okay. I think they don't have Lippy in hand. And this is a problem for them. I'm gonna Sigvald. And start damaging him. And then we get Magic Compass. So they are draining their own deck. We get two more discards. But that's fine. They can hit Sigvald and then we're uh, basically okay. Ah, uh, we did get hit on the squirrel as well. Okay, one more point of self-damage there. I could now play Svalblood. Although it is kind of risky to do. Although there are so many units on the board now. Um, I'm going to do it. It's going to be 6 damage immediately. Um, there we go. And we can hit the Bear Abomination. And just trigger it again. There we go. Um, I can heal Svalblood and then damage Sigvald. And that's okay. So we did lose Ceres there. Ooh, and we get Renfrey. That's a bad idea, buddy. Yeah, I think we got this. We did lose the Sigvald there, which is... Destroy an enemy unit with 8 or less power. Okay, I need 6 damage every time. Um, our opponent is kind of losing the connection there. I'm going to resurrect Sigvald already. Because I want to just push past the Renfrey. And I think we got this. And I think they just rage quit it. Yeah, that was a rage quit. Okay. So we definitely have the point output. Because we still have a lot of good cards in our deck as well. So I think that showed off quite nicely what I try to do when building these decks. Of course, this is not the only match that I usually play. I usually play a couple of matches to see what works, what doesn't, if I need to add more, more deck cards or not, but I don't want to make this video overly long. Uh, so this, this deck definitely works conceptually, so we will be moving forward with that. If you have any questions about deck building, do let me know in the comment section down below. There's only so much I can put in a single video. I want to just show off the process as it happens right now. Uh, but if you have any specific questions, just let me know in the comment section and then we can talk about this further down there. Because that's what we're here for, after all, trying to help each other out. So, that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, special little video on how to build your very own deck. And I'd like to see you all in the next video of, uh, well, the next episode of Quentin. So thank you enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye and stay nutty.